Well, good morning, and uh, thank you, Andrew, for that introduction. Uh, my name is uh, Colin Rush with Clean Seed Agriculture Technologies, and today we're going to talk about the Smart Seeder Max and driving field profitability with data and technology. Now, there, there's a lot of uh, you know what are called influences in ag technology uh, that are designed to basically give you value at the you know at the field level and driving field profitability, but it's, it's very difficult uh, to sort through. Uh, some of these uh, confluences that that are are being almost you know driven down uh, to the farm level to say that you know you have to deal with this or I have an app to deal with this or I have some data to deal with this. So one of my favorite quotes is actually from President Eisenhower. You know he says like farming looks mighty easy when when your plow is a pencil and you're a thousand miles from the cornfield. Uh, and, and this kind of unpacks a lot of things. It says, well, you know, okay, is this a regulatory thing where we have, you know, the federal government that wants to, to regulate, uh, you know, fertilizer for climate change? Uh, is this a margin thing where fertilizer prices or seed prices or, or just fuel machinery land prices are really out of control? And what about the science part of that, which is, you know, how do you deal with stuff like fertilizer efficiency? And then some new things like climate change and, and, and extreme drought where we can't predict, we can't use the five-year uh, average as, as saying, you know, that's, that's what's going to happen next year, whether it's moisture, uh, yields, et cetera. Uh, so those are all things that we, we look at. And the whole part of this is, is, is farming is extremely hard and, and certainly no secret to anything that, uh, that everybody is doing here um, today, but, you know, we talk about, you know, uncertainty around uh, fertilizer use, you know, the feds are saying reduce fertilizer by 30% uh, by the end of 2030. Uh, we talk about, you know, margins, you know, seed prices going up, fertilizer frenzy, uh, you know, all time highs here for fertilizer uh, that are squeezing margins, uh, climate change, extreme drought, uh, and now we've got floods in, in, in British Columbia impacting that. We've got new potential sources of, of, of income, these carbon markets, but sorting through them and how do we make money and what do I need to put in to get some of that income out is, is key. And then finally, the science part of it is, is we know that, that fertilizer and, and you know, fertilizer efficiency is a, a huge thing. And yes, it's vital to plants, but how can I maximize that? The issue with all of these is, is sometimes these things work in conflict with others is, is yes, I'd love to uh, support climate change and reduce fertilizer use, but how do I do that when I know what I need to make uh, a bushel of wheat or a bushel of canola? So when we look at this all is field profitability isn't necessarily driven by creating the biggest yield in the field. At the end of the day is what did it take and what did it cost to get there? And if we look at kind of the four R's of nutrient stewardship, the right source, right rate, right time, right place, these advanced uh, nutrient stewardship principles, um, they're designed to give you that balance to say, look, if you use fertility in your crops this way, uh, we're gonna basically not only maximize uh, uh, yields, but we're also gonna do it in an environmentally sustainable way. Um, if we look at apply that same thing on seed distribution, optimizing seed placement, seed distribution in there, and you couple to that, that gives you the basis of forming uh, your, your, your field profitability. The problem is, is how do you do all of these things? How do you capture all the value, you know, of all this plus regulatory, plus science, plus drought, plus uh, basically being a good steward of the environment? And the answer is, is if there was only some tools that could give you that balance, it could give you all those options based on your field conditions, your soil type, uh, your, your uh, uh, stewardship program, uh, all the way up to, you know, how can I access some of those carbon uh, profits that, that are potentially out there? And the answer is, is I'd like to introduce you to the Smart Seeder Max. We'll be right back. We just have a one minute video on the show and uh, we'll talk about the four hours right after that.
Well, welcome back. And uh, I hope you enjoyed looking at the Smart Cedar Max. We look at the four R's of, uh, of nutrient stewardship, the right source, the right rate. We're gonna look at the right time in the right place. These are what I call kind of the ground engaging side of things. You know, the right time match nutrients available to when crop needs them at the right time in the right place, placing those nutrients in the root zone where crops can use them. So let's take a, a, a dive on that. So with the Smart Cedar Max, one of our, our huge value propositions is we have a, this true no-till single pass coulter shank combination with cutting action. Now, why is that important? At the end of the day, um, getting through previous year's crop residue is one of the most challenging things to do, especially in a no-till situation. You know, certainly anybody can seed into a black field, uh, but we know, you know, with everything from erosion to uh, uh, basically uh, access to water, the amount of time, logistics, fuel, and effort that it takes to, to do those things. We know that certainly no-till uh, is, is one of the waves of the future. We know it's something we've done in Western Canada for, for decades, uh, and it seems to be catching on along the globe. So if we look at the coulter, it, it serves a couple different functions. One is it opens up a furrow to, to uh, reduce the draft load of putting a, a shank down deep. But more importantly, it actually cuts and it, and it parts the material uh, that trash as it goes through it. It allows then the coulter to get into you know, a perfect seed bed with that, that trash that goes to the side uh, of that. Now we'll, we'll talk about the coulter in a second, but accessing that right time in a single pass with very you know, limited field conditioning or no field conditioning, getting into that true no-till moment where you, you, you have the material that came off the combine and you're basically seeding directly into it. So we're talking about giving you a tool that gives you optimal access to the right time. So as we look at those coulter that comes into the ground, enters the ground at 90 degrees and starts to cut and to part that, uh, that significant trash that is out uh, in the field. And this next little clip here, you can see that that coulter is cutting and moving that material right to the side, like literally like a sawtooth blade. And this is one of the keys uh, of the, the, the coulter shank combination. It allows us, unlike a shank, which may uh, rake or, or drag uh, some of that trash, uh, to essentially uh, cut and part it. Uh, same thing with a, a flat uh, disc. We, we see hair pinning where we're actually pushing uh, organic material into the furrow, which then limits the ability from some of that seed soil contact. So giving you access to the right time is, is key. So what does that look like behind the unit? So when we cut and we part, that uh, trash goes through in a, in a different row. Now, you can see of this, this is uh, actually in very heavy piece stubble here that was actually uh, not harrowed, not uh, done at all, but it's, it's basically, it's cutting and pushing it between the rows. We're preserving that organic matter. And that's important for a couple of reasons on, on the right time. Obviously, we're, we're, we're maintaining uh, moisture there. We're suppressing weeds with that, that crop, allowing our crop to be established. But more importantly, as we preserve and build that organic matter, uh, that allows additional things like carbon sequestration uh, to be maximized. So again, with the right time, uh, we get now to the shank part of our coulter shank opener. So we have a triple shot opener. It looks and, and acts differently than anything on the market today. So we have a three quarter inch carbide tip that runs just slightly above uh, where the coulter runs and it actually fractures the soil. Then we have these little bio wings which stick out here and they provide, provide an agitation, an aeration, almost a lateral fracturing that gives a very loose, uh, loose bed of so soil. So as we cut and part that material, it actually, that fracturing and aerating the soil acts as a soil warming. That pore space opens up. We have uh, basically that warm air that is in the atmosphere that allows to penetrate to that the pore space and gives that seedling the, the, the perfect environment to emerge in because it is warming the soil along at the right time. Um, so again, we're fracturing the soil, we're aerating, and, and it's a, functioning as a soil warming for that right time. So let's talk about right place. And you can see the different uh, uh, features of, of our triple shot opener. And there's a lot of numbers here, uh, six different ones. But because we meter everything over top of the row, which we'll get into in a second, we are able to place products uh, wherever you want in the soil. So up to six different placements. So we've got one out the right side seed ledge. Uh, you can see the, the, you know, the, the kernel there uh, as a representation, two out the left side, 
Uh, we can go three down deep, and that's a two and a half inch vertical separation. Uh, we can do a true pair grow, which is number four. Uh, we can do a side band and a deep band uh, to split that product. And, and you have the, the singulation as number six, which is a, an additional uh, feature as well with the Max 5 and the Max S model. Um, and, and just a little secret, if you switch two hoses on there, you can actually do uh, uh, with the seed and, and deep as well on the right side seed bed. So it gives you this phenomenal uh, difference. Uh, and it's about a 30 second adjustment here. There's three different adjustments on the unit. Uh, eventually we'll electrify it and see if somebody wants to write a prescription around it. But it gives you that, that perfect placement of product based on soil type, your, your crop type, um, what your fertility package is and where you want these, these products in the thing. So not only can we vary products over top of the row, again, which we'll talk about at the right rate, uh, we can actually change the placement in there and kind of a bit of an industry first where we, we give you that option of doing that. So what are the benefits of the, of the right time, right place? Well, we know that that soil fracturing aeration results, that access to uh, uh, you know, that, that warm air, uh, access to things like starter foss uh, with the seed, uh, and pushing that trash in between the rows versus you know, letting it kind of rake and grow over top of it. This is on a competitor. We see there's just this awesome quick emergence, this root development uh, with the Smart Cedar Max, uh, which is, is showing incredible results. So a little bit later in, in the uh, kind of in the, in the plant uh, development process, uh, this was actually from this spring. And if you guys were like the rest of us, we seeded into dust. It, there was no moisture, what, the, what you know, really to speak of uh, in the furrow. Um, on the left was a, a leading dual shank precision air drill side by side with the Smart Cedar Max. And you can see that shank that basically sealed the bottom of the furrow. It, it, you know, it, it scrapes with the, with the furt and the seed knife. Uh, and it's a very hard pan, especially when there's no moisture there. Uh, the Smart Cedar Max, we're, we're actually getting down there at that three and a half, four inch plow pan based on, on your seed depth. And we're fracturing laterally as well. You can see this tremendous root growth that we have. One of the other things that we have with this, this right time, right place is, especially in very dry conditions or very wet conditions, we're, we're, we're allowing uh, the Smart Cedar Max furrow to grab that water from the, uh, from the water table as well as infiltration action. So in a very dry year or a very wet year, you're gonna see tremendous results uh, with Smart Cedar Max. And if you look at uh, this next page here, you know, what does emergence, what does an emergence head start give to you? Well, it doesn't always give you yield. We, we have crops that, that catch up. Uh, we know that um, uh, things can equalize pests, uh, heat units, et cetera. But if we look on the left-hand side, so the very, or sorry, the far right side here of your screen, that's a Smart Cedar Max. That, that actually was seeded three days uh, later than the one next to it in the same conditions here. So uh, at this stage, we're, we're actually, we seeded later and we're actually uh, really one uh, true leaf ahead uh, in staging. So again, very optimal uh, spacing, uh, access to fertility. And one thing we found is in that dry conditions, uh, it had basically a hard uh, pack. We almost need a hammer and a chisel to break apart the, the plants and the roots uh, from the competitor versus you could basically pull the plants out by hand in that very loose bed of soil. And it still had access to that water table, that, that moisture that wicked up uh, from below. So we know that uh, timing and placement of fertility can, can essentially eliminate uh, losses from leaching, denitrification, volatilization, and mobilization and management. We, we know advanced uh, 4R uh, nutrient stewardship uh, can reduce nitrous oxide by up to 14%. Again, you know, is this important to the bottom line? Well, not right now. But as we look at uh, you know, being regulated and perhaps the amounts of fertilizer we can put in, uh, we know that some of these practices, everything from timing to placement, are going to become key into managing those, those uh, greenhouse emissions uh, through nitrous oxide. So again, uh, having that, that option of product placement, having the ability to go in a true no-till thing is going to be uh, key going forward. All right, we talked about right time, right place. Let's talk about the other two R's, the right source and the right rate. So we're, we're trying to match that fertilizer type to the crop needs. We're matching the amount of fertilizer type that the crop needs at right rate. So as we look at it, um, one thing we know with fertilizer blending is that it's a compromise. Um, not every area of the field requires the same nutrients in the same proportion that you've put into the blend. So everything is a compromise. And, and plus they charge you for blending from your fertilizer retailer. 
uh, as we look at it and our air system, because we meter over top of the row, why not do that blending in the furrow at exactly the right proportions of uh, the products that you that you see? So again, our, our air system brings product uh, in bulk on demand over top of each row. But in terms of uh, actually putting it in there, you can. we have four volumetric meters here, uh, plus either a volumetric or a simulation one. Um, you can essentially you know, have your macronutrients blended uh, on the fly to the right ratios that you want <clears throat> in the field. So we want you to blend on the fly. We, we don't want you to compromise, uh, but it is a huge thing. So getting into that right source of the fertilizer is huge. All right, now we talk about right rate, which is, is where the Smart Seeder Max uh, shines. Um, we, again, we don't do central uh, metering or section control uh, from a cart. We're actually uh, this giant printer. We have 300 different uh, control points on a 60 foot machine, 12 inch spacing. Every row has an independent five product variable rate seeder. And we do that through stepper motor technology. Uh, these motors are very, very uh, power uh, uh, efficient. Uh, about 20 to 30% of a DC motor. And they allow us to be infinitely variable from essentially ounces per acre that we can put on up to hundreds of pounds per acre, 250 pounds plus at field speed at about five miles an hour. So it gives you, without changing a roller, it gives you infinite variability right over top of the row. Now, why is that important? Well, uh, if you look at this and you can imagine a product being turned and you can see our cushion drive meter that's turning there. Uh, every row gets exactly what it needs in the furrow uh, based on what you prescribe, whether that's flat rate, we know it's even distribution in that. So the question becomes is, as you look at your as applied data, and maybe you've got an air, air drill out there, you know, you, you pull your as applied data and says, look, this is what went down, uh, is, is actually what's in the furrow by row by row the same as what, uh, uh, as what it says on your as applied map? And the answer is, is probably not. Uh, so when we look at this, why wouldn't you want to have your world's largest printer or essentially printing your fields? The Smart Seeder Max, again, you know, the, those 300 independent control points is, is really the world's largest printer uh, for dry fertility. We can put exactly what is needed not only at the right rates, micromanaging those rates row by row, meter by meter uh, independently, but we can also change where things go into the furrow. So what does that look like? Well, if you look at, at that, um, you can see that actually the meters are dumping into the funnels. We, we don't use air to get it down to furrow, we use gravity. So there's very even distribution. You can almost count uh, the urea nodules as they go into the ground. You can see FOSS and a pair of wheat going down as well. But if you look at uh, being able to print your fields, you're, you're essentially looking at that very even distribution and that is row by row control. We're not relying on a central metering system to hopefully that air is dividing uh, evenly and not randomly. And, and air in fact uh, does not divide evenly and we know that. So what are you potentially losing uh, from row to row variance? So this is a bit of an eye chart, but I'm going to explain it. So this is actually a triple replicated study. Uh, this was a hand harvested uh, rows uh, in three different uh, locations uh, off across a 30 foot air drill, it was a Concord air drill. Um, and if you look at it, uh, the left side is yield. It goes from uh, you know kind of a low of 60 up to 180 bushels. The three different lines, green, white, and gray, are the three different studies. And across the bottom is is the row number uh, that. Uh, that uh, is gone. And you think, well, wait a minute, this thing's kind of all over the map. And, and certainly there are, there are impacts based on topography, water, soil type, Th those do impact yields uh, row to row. But if you look at, you know, just look at row four here, this is an interesting one here. So row four uh, on, on to the study has, you know, about 90 bushels per acre uh, on average, if you took that across the width of uh, on an acre basis. And then the very next row, you know, goes up to, you know, 140 to 160 bushels per acre. And you think, well, wait a minute, you know, yeah, I know there is variability in my soils, but you're telling me that these rows are all over the map. And the answer is, is this is the effect of air distribution. And we know this because when you have a plugged row, say on fertility on your air drill, and that row doesn't get the nutrients exactly what you need, we know that yield. And you can see it visually that that, that row isn't yielding uh, what it could uh, because you're not getting that perfect distribution. So the answer is, 
if this is what your flat rate product is doing with fertility, with inputs, with seed optimization here, what are you doing if you're saying I, I do variable rate? Now, variable rate, a lot of people have said, look, I haven't got uh, you know, the benefits of variable rate that I want to see. And, and the answer is, is well, th there's probably a reason. Because if you're taking a, an error like this on flat rate, and then you're compounding it by varying it, um, the, the, the outcomes are probably not going to be as predictable as you think they're going to be. So again, that, that right rate is, is, is huge as we go through it. And this notion of the smart CRMAX being a giant printer is key. So are you using your, your data efficiently to manage high resolution planning? Now the Smart Cedar Max has a lot of levels of different value. If you wanted to do flat rate and say, look, I, I just wanna get away from air distribution issues. I, I want everything to come out evenly. I want that turn compensation built in row by row. I want my row by row shut up. Absolutely, there's tremendous value there. But the Smart Cedar Max has so much more. Because we meter over top of every row, every row is a five product, independent, multi-product variable rate seeder. You know, so as we enter uh, uh, with a high definition prescription, we, we enter a polygon off of a shape file or a geojson file. Um, as we every row enters that, it actually records both the speed of the unit, uh, the heading, uh, the GPS coordinates, and the command that says, "Hey, we need to apply this rate of of, uh, of inputs into the furrow," um, and we map that out every time it enters a polygon. So if we look at a three meter resolution shape file. Um, and we do five products variable rate, and we assume that they're changing every single uh, foot, which is which is not not the case. But that would be a potential of about over 14 million different data events, and every one of those would be logged by the Smart Cedar Max row by row, uh, product by product as we go through it. So now we we get a little bit more exponentials. We do one meter resolution. You know, we're potentially talking a maximum again, not changing everyone, but 129 million. So getting down to 30 centimeters levels of that one foot resolution. Would, would potentially be almost 1.2 billion changes in a 160 acre field. And that's a lot of changes for any machine to, to handle map and to, uh, to do the as applied. But the Smart Seater Max was designed to do exactly that, to take these high resolution prescriptions with our onboard edge computing system here, our ability to uh, basically handle and process data quickly, as well as upload and as applied in a compressed format, either in a CSV file, uh, export it to, to a GIS type of situation where you can look at that as applied data, it, it, it's key. So we've kind of talked about the table stakes, the 4R nutrient stewardship, but what do we talk about now is pushing the boundaries. What other layers of value can a smart seeder max bring? We talked about singulation, that, that, that plants per acre outcome. Uh, things like intercropping, cover cropping, which are a really exciting kind of new technologies. There's more value there. What about you know, what can the Smart Senior Max do with some of the carbon programs? It's things like dual or tri-hybrid planting. We, we know that some genetics do better in different soil types, different topographies, access to water. Uh, what about starting to blend those into a prescription uh, to do different types of seed, uh, you know, based on, on where we're going? And certainly, uh, we need to have that foot-by-foot -foot traceability for all product, products and, and rates as we go through it. So we're talking about singulation, uh, and I want to introduce you to a kind of a new configuration called, called the Max 5. So last year we introduced the Max S, which was, uh, it's a traditional vacuum planter uh, uh, disc, but it is driven by a stepper motor right over top of the row, giving you that, that, uh, that very accurate plant, uh, plant by plant uh, acre um, allocation. The Max 5, though, is a new configuration based on what are some of our customers asked for, where, where you want that high resolution volumetric metering, where it's almost singulation, that 90% plus type, but it's, it's based on a volumetric rate. We still want to count the seeds, and we have a, the 10 beam a seed count sensor below that. But both are designed to give you that even distribution of product here and basically do that optimum uh, plants per acre. So as, as we look at, you know, we want that one canola seed every two inches or every three inches or, or peas or corn or soybeans, uh, we can definitely do that. And we can do it two different ways, that high resolution volumetric metering, which is almost singulation versus actual singulation based on, on what you need. But the Max 5 has that flexibility to do other things like micronutrients, soil amendments in the row, or, or just seed as well. Cover crops, and I, I've heard uh, I heard uh, you know Wes Anderson talk about this from Crop Pro uh, yesterday, uh, and and they are especially north of the border becoming more and more of a thing. We we want to manage that that black dirt. We want to have maximum seedbed utilization, 
cover crops have traditionally not been, you know, really easy to do because uh, with traditional air seeding technology, it, it's been difficult, you're, you're, whether you're blocking off rows or you're going a second pass. But with the Smart Seeder Max, again, because we meter over top of every row, we can actually assign a row, whether it's odd rows, even rows, third rows, or custom. So essentially, you basically say, look, I want a cereal crop uh, in between my, my broad acre crop. Uh, and uh, I want to put uh, this type of fertility with it, and then we can set the depth independently on each row. But it's very simple to set up in the software, and the Smart Seeder Max and the SeedSync software take over from there. So again, just punching those in, defining you know, where you want it. Um, you, know, if, you know, some neat things, if you're a seed grower and you want to have male and female plants in here, you can define exactly uh, where those things are planting at the same time. You can have, uh, you know, multiple male plants and multiple female plants and, and, and repeat that across the unit as well. So not only just cover crops, but why don't we talk about the evolution to, you know, true intercropping where we're, we're taking off those products as a commercial, uh, you know, multiple commercial products. So say you wanted to do, you know, peas and singulation, uh, define a, a singulation rate, uh, saying, look, I, I don't want uh, nitrogen with my, my peas, but I want it with my canola. That's uh, whether it's a canola pea lentil uh, uh, intercrop variety. Um, and, and that's very simple again to do. That's just uh, what the Smart Seeder Max can do. This is literally talking about loading your products, telling them where the, which bins they're in, and then just a quick setup in the software and your seeding. And it's, it's basically putting those different crops down uh, every single row at whatever uh, you prescribe. Finally, kind of talking about some of the carbon programs. And it seems like every week there's, there's a new carbon program announced. And, and we're kind of what I call in the messy middle, right? So everybody has, uh, you know, the way they're approaching these things, how to access and sell carbon credits to consumers uh, and to, to issue those to at the farm level. Um, and, and all of them have different regulations, all of them pay different prices based on what you're doing. Uh, look, in the messy middle, you know, we, we talk about additional practices. Look, I've been in no-till, but they're not going to pay me uh, if you know, I've been there for 20, 30 years, but they're not going to pay me for no-till. Uh, so that's is it an additional practice. But yet, if I, if I was out you know, cultivating and, and I've gone to no-till, they'll pay me for that. What about permanence? Permanence is in these programs is, is look, I've been in no-till, but next year I'm disking this up because uh, whether it's weather conditions or, or logistics, I have to do it. Uh, you know, these, these programs around no-till, strip-till, are they additional, are they new? Uh, you know, Bayer's got an additional one here that says, like, we're going to pay you $6 per acre per year if you, if you use cover cropping. Um, so all these programs have a couple things that different. One is they need to measure that soil carbon. Uh, there's a process to do that. And it's also about the traceability of your practices. So when we know that every 1% in organic matter, uh, basically on, on the field level, uh, equals about uh, 20 additional tons of additional carbon dioxide uh, sequestered in the soil per acre. Um, we know that the Smart Seeder Max uh, is, uh, is a huge uh, benefit there. So why not talk about you know, the management of the in-ground, the four R's, the nutrient stewardship, preserving that organic matter, as well as uh, um, the ability to trace it on a foot-by-foot, product-by-product basis. Uh, how do we do that? Obviously, uh, our seed sync software, we're talking about digital sophistication, meeting simplicity, uh, and that is available, you know, we, we can cloud this in real time, uh, but if you're offline as well, we have the ability to, to manage that as well. Uh, and again, we, we've made it as simple as possible. Uh, it's essentially a web server. You can run, and run this unit with your phone uh, because all the computations are happening on the onboard computer. So let's talk about value, and, and value is certainly in the eye of the beholder, it's, but we're talking about unrivaled value and capability. Um, we know the Smart Seeder Max technology, we know we're going to reduce operating costs, uh, we know we have the, the potential to increase yields dramatically, and we can do that in a very sustainable manner. But you know, if you're a flat rate guy and you said, look, I just want that, that the row by row shut off, I, I, you know, I, I want the turn compensation, uh, you know, what is my value? Well, the value is going to be the savings of the inputs plus the fracturing and the ability of the opener to do what it does and, and the placement. You know, but if we look at the value, say, look, I'm going to push the limits of my agronomy for my, uh, my, per, my own uh, uh, farm. Uh, we have a huge list of things, everything from, you know, singulation, dual uh, uh, and tri-hybrid planting, narrow transport, fill time, uh, true five product capability, blending on the fly, metering, uniform row distribution, uh, overlap, changing products in the field, high resolution prescriptions. The value is, is how you determine it. 
we know that on average it's about 2,000 acres, the average size of farm. Last year's kind of canola average uh, for operating costs was about $273 per acre. We know that is low this year with, with everything from fertility, fuel, land, rent, that's going to go up dramatically. So, so savings and, and gains are very important, more important than ever, especially as we kind of navigate this, this new potential regulatory and carbon market thing. So we know that we can define it on, on out, uh, operating cost savings. We know we're going to gain in margins, but how you push uh, the value of the smart seeder will be uh, up to you. We know there's a base level value there, but there's tremendous value as you utilize the capabilities of the machine. Finally, just a couple updates. Uh, so Clean Seed, happy to announce that earlier this year that we are building a new uh, headquarters and assembly facility here in Saskatoon. We're literally moving boxes in as we speak. Uh, we're, we're pointing new dealers. Uh, we're building uh, products here for customers this spring, which is exciting. Uh, and we're always working on uh, new products as well, including you know, some new uh, sensor integrations for real time, as well as new configurations, which will be released next year. Uh, we're gonna be setting up a very aggressive demonstration schedule across Western Canada. Uh, so talk to your dealers, you can drop us a note at Clean Seed as well. But speaking of new products, uh, I just wanted to show uh, the group here. This is our, our new uh, 2022 uh, model year loading conveyor option. Uh, all the videos you've seen here, you think, well, how do you load that thing? And, and that was deliberately done like that. Uh, if you want to order it less, a conveyor option, uh, if you have a seed, you know, a seed uh, a tender that can fill that uh, those carts uh, very easily. Um, what's neat about this is certainly you can fill every row, but actually the conveyor uh, basically slides around, not underneath, it picks up the single point unloading, uh, which is a standard option on all Smart Seeker Max uh, bulk transfer carts. Uh, so again, kind of a neat innovation uh, and is an option here for customers in uh, model year 2022 and beyond. Finally, we call the Smart Seeder Max the smartest seeder on earth for a reason. There's a ton of value. We covered a little bit of that, not just about the features and benefits, but, but how these things can generate significant value for you uh, on your farm and at your producer level here. So if you want to know more, please check us out online, uh, smartseedermax.com. Uh, send us a note. I'll be through Feed Loop and through the virtual booth here today as well. And I'm happy to take your questions. Uh, and finally, just, you know, are you a smart seeder? There's tremendous value here. Doing things differently is not a vice. Um, it, it, it's an exploration of, of how you can push uh, and drive yield profitability, or profitability on your farm level by reducing operating costs and increasing uh, yield in a sustainable manner. So, so with that, uh, that's kind of the end of the presentation. Um, I thank you.